Okay, and welcome back to our next installment of shellcode obfuscation techniques. Today, we're going to take a look at something I'll call the two array method. So the two array method involves making your shellcode into two arrays. And rather than just splitting it in half, what we're going to be doing is creating an array of evens and odds. Now, I'm not saying even and odds by the value of the shellcode byte. I'm saying even and odd based on their position in the original shellcode array. So if you imagine the first byte of the shellcode we've been taking a look at is FC, that is in position zero, which we're going to call even. So that's going to go into an even array. And then we've got uh, FC48. So 48 is going to be the second one that is in position one, that is in an odd position. So we're going to put 48 into the odd array. The next byte would be 83. That's in the second position. So that's going to go into the evens array. And then we're going to have E4. And that's going to go into the odds array. And we're going to continue iterating through our shell code until we've broken all of it up into two arrays. So let's take a look at that. So here I have a simple Python program that takes our shell code, starts out FC 48, 83, E4, ends with FFD5. And I'm going to create two lists. And then I'm going to populate those lists by calling this split list function. And what I'm going to do is uh, iterate through my input list of shellcode. And we're going to use this modulus operator. If the result is equal to zero, that means that we have an even number. If there is any remaining, that means that we're on an odd number. And we'll add that value to the odd list. Otherwise, it goes in the even list. Then we just continue iterating. So if we were to run that, ah, there we go. So you can see here, we've got two arrays tells us our payload size. We need to know how big our, our original shell code is. And we have an array of evens and array of odds. If we look at this, FC 48, 83, E4. So there we go. And then we end with FF and D5. Now you'll notice that uh, if you look at the sizes here, because we had an odd sized shell code array, odd number, I should say, 593 bytes. So these are going to be differently sized. One is going to be one byte larger than the other. You're always going to have that when you have odd. Now, uh, let's take a look at this program. So we've got our array of evens and odds, and we have defined our payload size. So now we have a shellcode array that we're going to uh, declare here. And we're going to declare two indexes. And while our master index is less than the payload size, so meaning the main index is going to count the number of bytes that are in our payload. And then what we're going to do is we're going to read from the evens array using the evens to array IDX, which is currently zero, we're going to place that value in shellcode IDX. And then we will do a test here. If our to array IDX is equal to the size of our odds array, which means we've already iterated through all of our shellcode. Uh, so we don't need to do anything here. However, if the two array index is not currently equal to the size of the odds array, it means we still have more shellcode to read. If that's the case, we're going to go to shellcode index plus one. So the first byte we wrote into shellcode index zero. 
Now we're reading from the odd array. This is the second byte that we've copying. So we need to shift over one position in our shellcode array. So we do that with index plus one. And then we're going to read from odds at the two array index, because remember, we're still reading the first byte from this array. We read this byte. Now we're reading this byte. We place that in our shellcode array. We increment both. Uh, we increment our two array index here, which will allow us to move one position over in each of the even and odds arrays. And then we're going to shift our index by two. That's because we just wrote two bytes into our shellcode array. So we need to move over by two. Otherwise, uh, instead of having FC 4883 E4, we would end up having FC 83 because we would have overwritten the odd bytes if we only incremented this by one. And then we print the results out. So if we run this, we can see FC 4883 and we end with FFD5. So it worked just like we thought it would. Defender doesn't seem to think there's anything wrong. So let's go ahead and check this with virus total. Now, as I'm uploading this, uh, it should state that the, the first time I became aware of this was something that uh, Justin Polk, a member of our team, proposed. And uh, he was like, hey, maybe this would work. We should test it out. We tested it out. Uh, I don't believe that uh, he was the first person to come up with that idea because uh, I have seen signs that even the technique is detected even if you're using encrypted shell codes. So uh, they're definitely aware of this uh, means of obfuscating shell code. It's not encryption. We're simply breaking up our bytes so that we don't have uh, a the same bytes in the order that we would in unobfuscated shellcode. And maybe this works as an obfuscation routine. And we see that it does, uh, 8 of 72. So it's not terrible. Um, just a little over 10% of the engines detected this. So it's not bad. Uh, it's not great, but uh, there's room to be improved. We could find other techniques that would work better. Okay, and there you have it. The two array technique is something that we can use to obfuscate our shellcode depending on the engine that our target is using. We saw that it got detected by 10, or excuse me, 8 of 72 engines. That's about 10%. So it's not terrible, it's not great, but it is something that we can use. I would like to say thank you for joining us again today on this installment of Shellcode Obfuscation Techniques. Stay tuned for the next installment where we're going to take a look at even further obfuscation techniques that we can use.